Hello and welcome to Finextra. I'm Emily Haller and I'm here with Colin Ryan of EY and we're talking about the evolution of the banking industry. Thanks very much for joining me. Thank you. So what are the latest banking developments at the moment, in particular on the bank's relationship with their customers? I think right now it's more about how is it evolving, what's happening and, and what, what are our clients sort of struggling with this year and next. Clearly the open banking agenda what the regulators across Europe are trying to do in terms of making it easier and more transparent for consumers to interact with their financial service providers is great for consumers, uh, is a huge challenge and a huge lift for financial services organisations. Um, the, the regulatory change agenda outside of open banking is massive, so the extent of change that organisations need to digest on, in the next 12, 18, 24 months, massive. Secondly, and we all know this, consumers are increasingly demanding high expectations in terms of brands, services, and how they interact with, with financial service providers and their other service providers. In the Irish marketplace alone, we did a primary research in EY last year, and quite interestingly, 55% uh, of Irish consumers are already banked with three institutions or more, not switching yet because they don't have choice, but over a third of Irish consumers don't trust their current financial services providers. So we feel there's a huge pent-up demand latent demand for mobi mobility amongst consumers once choice comes into the market. So you take that pattern uh, and we think next year, 2018, 2019, you're going to see a significant amount of movement and change and increase sort of focus on niche parts of the market as new entrants come in. Um, so it's going to be a very interesting 24 months. And what are some of the challenges that banks are facing with the customer relationship? My own reflection from a, rec a recent client conversation on the relationship um, that banks have had traditionally and their business models and where it's going. If you think about a bank and the type of product that it sells, it actually kind of in the, in the new world has two broad classes of, of product. You have your traditional more kind of current account, uh, card, payment oriented products which are now going to be largely somewhat disintermediated post PSD2, post CMA, almost commoditized products and, consu and consumers will therefore, banks will be less close to their consumers, and consumers will move around. If you were setting up a greenfield business for a product set like that, you would build a very small, agile, technology-led organization with a small distribution model. If, on the other hand, you look at the other products and the more important products, the emotive transactions, uh, life events, buying a home, planning for retirement, investment advice, consumers still value the traditional bank, value the branch. 69% of Irish consumers want to be able to research online and then walk into a branch and have a meaningful conversation with someone who will give them unbiased advice. So you've got two very different business models. So the challenges for banks today, if you're a full service banking provider, you actually need to find a way of delivering both of those business models off a legacy cost base and a legacy technology base. And I think it's going to be really, really interesting as to whether or not traditional full service providers continue to be full service providers and we're starting to see in other geographies now uh, patterns where organisations, large organisations, traditional organisations are starting to focus in on smaller parts of the market and that's how I think it's going to evolve. So what business strategies are needed to underpin these approaches in practice? I think on business strategies uh, a couple of points. Um, a lot of financial services providers, if you look in the Irish market over the last sort of two, three to five years, have moved extensively online have created convenience and access uh, for the majority of their customer base. And yet, the, an unintended effect of that is their connection with consumers and the extent to which they're providing consumers with good financial services advice and understanding of product knowledge uh, has decreased. So in the Irish consumer base, we would be one of the sort of most online communities in terms of mass population. And yet, 70% of Irish consumers when surveyed last year felt they didn't really fundamentally understand their financial services needs. 40% within the, within the total population weren't online and didn't have a good understanding of their financial services needs. So the proximity uh, and, and the connection between, or the relevance, if you like, between banks and consumers is a challenge. So strategically, banks need to work on that. Um, secondly, I think, in, in, in terms of strategically, banks need to think about uh, their role in, in longer journeys. Uh, Financial services transactions are increasingly that. They are now just transactions. Uh, leaders amongst our client base, when we look across Europe, are moving to needs-based understanding of consumers, looking at the underlying, underlying need, the underlying journey, the longer transaction, if you like. And that's beyond customer journeys, which is there's quite a lot of work on customer experience and customer journeys, and into sort of new ways of understanding customer bases and helping people with longer journeys, like buying and owning a home. Um, and I think organisations that set themselves up around that and do it properly will jump ahead. Colin, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching.